What's up guys, my name is Jack, Easy Mode Exams. I have a first class degree in biochemistry and my goal is to make your exams and studying as easy as possible. So this video is going to be all about fundamental particles, okay? This is under the atomic structure topic for AQA A-level chemistry. So what do you need to know? Now this information right here on the screen is straight out of the AQA a-level chemist specification. As always, link in the description, check it out yourself. Now I'm gonna read through this bullet by bullet, so feel free to pause the video and read yourself or skip ahead. Now, you need to be able to appreciate that knowledge and understanding of atomic structure has evolved over time, okay? Models of the atom. You also need to know about protons, neutrons, and electrons, real basic GCSE stuff, guys, I'm not gonna lie and you need to know about their relative charge and relative mass, and you need to be able to say the respective charge and mass of each subatomic particle, okay? You also need to know that an atom consists of a nucleus containing protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons. So hopefully this is a real quick video, basically a GCSE recap with a little bit more information. So let's jump into this. So as with every single thing in science, guys, Atomic structure is no different. Knowledge and understanding of it has evolved over time. So I'm gonna run through a quick timeline in terms of how the atom and the model of the atom has developed over time, okay? So you don't need to know an insane amount of detail, just the key points, all right? So first up, we have this dude, John Dalton, in 1803, and he developed something called the solid sphere model. That's pretty much what I'm gonna to refer to it as. You may see it called something else, but you honestly don't even really need to know about this. This should hopefully be GCSE stuff. And this is where elements were made of indivisible spherical atoms, all right? And all atoms of a particular element had the same mass, okay? So hydrogen had a mass of one, for example, et cetera, et cetera. They were indivisible. They were just spheres of atoms. They didn't really have a clue what was going on at this point, to be fair. 1803, all right? Then in 1897, almost 100 years later, this dude came along called J.J. Thompson, right? And he did a bunch of experiments that led to something called the plum pudding model. Okay, so what is the plum pudding model? I've seen this come up before in past exam questions, super rare, but it has come up. So basically what this is, is you have this blue, this pale blue sphere here, which is just a positively charged sphere, basically a big mushy cloud of positive charge. And then we had a negative electron scattered about at complete random inside the sphere, right? So plum pudding. Now, I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but I've never had a plum pudding in my life. So maybe something like a chocolate chip muffin may, <laughs> may represent it a bit better. Anyway, moving on. Again, as I said, you don't really need to know the crazy details, but I have seen past exam questions where it's more like compare two different models, all right? So you don't need to know dates, you don't need to know names. There we go, plum pudding model. Next up, another dude comes along, right? Ernest Rutherford in 1911, and he makes a huge progression, all right? This is where we have the nuclear model, okay? And he reached this conclusion for a variety of experiments, but the most famous one is the gold foil experiment. You should have covered this at GCSE, guys. I'm not gonna go into detail here. You don't really need to know about it. I'm not gonna lie. So this is where an atom is made up of mostly empty space, okay? And it contains a teeny tiny positively charged nucleus at the center, okay? And the negatively charged electrons surround this nucleus. So he had a bit of an idea of what was going on, but this wasn't it, guys. The story doesn't end here. We had some progression still to be made. Bossman Bohr comes along around 1915, Niels Bohr, with the planetary model, okay? Sometimes called the planetary model. And this is where the electrons orbit the nucleus in distinct energy levels called shells, all right? You'll see this at GCSE, very common model. It's progressed quite a bit since then, but to be fair, back in 1915, he knew what was going on, all right? He had, he had a good idea of what was going on through a variety of experiments. So I wanna emphasize something quickly to you guys. This isn't history, all right, this is chemistry. Don't worry about the dates and the scientists' names and everything. I just wanted to sort of tell a story of how it's developed so you can wrap your head around it a little bit. 
But what you need to remember is the details of the model. So for example, with the plum pudding model, you had that positively charged sphere filled with negative electrons scattered around at random. But then when we jump along to the nucleus model by Ernest Rutherford, this is where the nucleus was discovered. You have the positive nucleus at the center made up of protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons, right? Negatively charged electrons reached through the gold foil experiment. So details like that are really good to know just in case random questions pop up. This is honestly going to be more at AS level, all right? So if you're only taking the A2 or the A level paper at the end of year two, I wouldn't stress about this too much, all right? Just wrap your head around the Niels Bohr model and what we're going to look at now, the current atomic model. So how has this progressed? So since 1915, good old Niels Bohr, a bunch of scientists have worked on this, probably hundreds, thousands potentially, in what we have as the current model. And it honestly hasn't changed an insane amount, okay, in terms of the basic fundamentals. It's quite similar to Bohr's model, okay, but instead of electrons orbiting the central nucleus like planets do the sun, they are existing within sub-energy levels. Okay, they do not orbit the nucleus on fixed paths. Okay, they're within what we refer to as orbitals, but these orbitals are within fixed energy levels. So Niels Bohr pretty much had it right, but there was a few errors that have been progressed since then, mainly through things like quantum mechanics and physicists, pretty much, not so much the chemist side of things. Now, don't worry about this for now, okay? The name, honestly, the name orbitals kind of annoys me because it confuses students and makes it think that they're orbiting the nucleus. That isn't the case. But don't worry about this, guys. You'll learn far more about this when it comes on to the electron configuration topic. So honestly, just forget orbitals for now. Forget sub-energy levels. We'll come back to that in the electron configuration topic. So don't stress. Just understand that the atomic model has progressed. That's all AQA really wants you to understand, okay? Now let's get onto the more juicy stuff, right? The subatomic particles. So we have the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Now, you need to know their position, their relative mass, and their relative charge, all right? I'd advise taking a note of this because I've seen it come up a bunch of times in AS, not so much A-level, a um, but it has come up before. So position, where is the proton and neutron? These are in the nucleus. You should know this from GCSE, all right? Easy stuff here. Now, electrons are within orbitals, okay? They don't orbit the nucleus, they are within orbitals. Again, annoying terminology, but it is what it is. So we're gonna get to that when it comes on to the electron configuration topic. You can ignore it for now. Relative mass. So what does this mean, right? You're gonna see a proton and neutron, they both have a relative mass of one. What does this mean? How are they one? What, like what? How do we get to that number? One unit of mass is 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. All right, it's a long ass number. It's hard to work with. It's difficult when you're dealing with calculations and things like that. So to keep all things relative, we say that a proton and a neutron both have a mass of this 1.661 times 10 to the minus 27. And we just say that, okay, that is one. All right, so that's how relative mass comes about. It's not their actual mass. They don't weigh one gram or one kilogram. It's just relative to one another, all right? And then when we get onto the electrons, these are tiny, guys. These are so small and have an incredibly low mass. So it's essentially that big ass number, 1.661 dot blah, 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 divided by 1,840, all right? And that's a relative mass of one over 1,840. Okay, so try and remember that fraction, keep things easy. Now, we have relative charge. This is very similar to relative mass, whereby one unit of charge has a charge of 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. All right, you don't need to know these units. You don't need to know this number or remember it. You just need to understand that it's relative. Okay, so what is the relative charge of a proton? Positive one or plus one? The relative charge of a neutron is completely neutral. It's in the name, not too stressful there. Do your best to remember that it's zero. Okay, this is important. And then electrons is just exactly the opposite of a proton minus one. All right, so proton, positive. Just remember the P in proton. Neutrons are neutral. It's literally in the word neutron. Shouldn't be too hard there. And then electron minus one. Okay, GCSE stuff, guys. I'm gonna fly through this. Hopefully it's very easy to understand this. 
So that's it. Pretty much <laughs> that's fundamental particles done, subatomic particles done. Let's do a quick bout of active recall, okay? I strongly advise you guys just quickly do this. I know it's a super easy video, but just attempt these questions, all right? Jot some words down on a scrap piece of paper. See if you can remember what you just learned, all right? The easy part is watching the video. The hard part is actually trying to remember the information, all right? So first off, question one, what is the relative mass and charge of protons, neutrons, and electrons, and where are they contained within the atom? All right, so give this a go, pause the video, try it yourself. Next one, describe two differences between the plum pudding model and the current atomic model. All right, so sticking that cheeky table back up, we have proton, neutron, electron. Protons and neutrons are both in the nucleus and electrons are within orbitals, done. Relative mass, one, one, and then we have a fraction here, one over 1840. Their relative charges are positive one, zero or neutral, and then minus one for the electron. All right, easy stuff there. Hopefully you guys got that right. Next up, we got question two, okay? So we're describing two differences. So if you think back to the plum pudding model that we just looked at, you had a fat off spherical cloud of positive charge with negative charge scattered throughout. Whereas in the current model, there is a central nucleus, right? This is where things are switched up. We have a nucleus which contains a positively charged protons or multiple of them and uncharged neutrons. All right? It's really important that you remember the and part here because in the mark scheme of previous questions, I've seen them emphasize the point that you need to mention protons and neutrons, okay? Neutrons weren't discovered at the time of the plum pudding model or the chocolate chip model, all right? So next up, the second point here is going to be that in the current model, the electrons are arranged in orbitals and these orbitals are within energy levels. Now I've put sub in brackets because they will not require this of you in the mark scheme or to get the mark, but it's really important to understand when you get to that electron configuration topic, that there are things such as sub energy levels. All right. So there's not honestly not much to this topic, but uh, I thought I'd do some active recall to help you guys out. Honestly, you shouldn't have to come back to this too often. When it comes onto the atomic structure topic, it's all mainly going to be about electron configuration, ionization, energies, mass spec, relative atomic mass, things like that. Okay. They kind of skip over this stuff because it's more so GCSE level content, right? So let's quickly do a summary and spec check, ticking off everything we've learned. Appreciate that knowledge and understanding of atomic structure has evolved over time, done. Went through the different models over time. Then we have protons, neutrons, and electrons with their relative charge and relative mass. We looked at that, what they are. And then real basic stuff, I don't know why they included this. An atom consists of a nucleus containing protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons. I honestly don't know why they included that, but there we go. I hope you found this video helpful guys. If you did, give it a like. It really helps the YouTube algorithm work its magic. If you have any mates that are struggling, send this video over to them to help them out. Check out one of these videos if you wanna boost your grades even more. Best of luck with your revision and upcoming exams guys. Until next time, peace.